Do you know your risk posture? With Crossbow, you can run and analyze adversarial campaigns in real time against your production infrastructure to validate your intrusion detection, antivirus, phishing protection, and incident response. Know your cyber exposure with Crossbow. Oh, what do we do? We're, we're, where are we? We're in Vegas in some undisclosed location. No, we're at the, the Grim party. Re a precursor to the... This is like the pre, the pre Grim party. Uh, and so what are we talking about right now? I wanted to go through... Are we going to um, play trivia? Trivia? I trivia? want to play trivia. Yeah, I Can we play trivia? trivia? Let's play yeah. trivia. Yo, well, Josh, Let's you're going to have to help because I'm horrible at trivia. I'm, so. I'm on your team, brother. All right. So you guys are going to... Okay, so why don't you guys share the mic? That would be extremely helpful. We're going to go through the history of malware trivia. It's not a complete history. There are 10 nice. questions. All right. You ready? The Morris worm was created by Robert T. Morris and spread rapidly throughout the world, becoming the first worm to spread extensively via the internet in what year? Um, God, 1986? Eh, 1988. Close. Close, oh. but no cigar. Robert Morris, uh, this is another Robert Morris question, was tried and convicted under the Computer Fraud and Abuse Act which university was Robert working for at this time? Uh, Stanford. No. MIT? Uh, that's a very popular guess, but incorrect. Oh, even our cheat over there is now thinking that's MIT. <laughs> <laughs> that was your answer, wasn't it? Yes. It was 1991. I know what year it was. No, it was 1981. It, it was in, in 1991 that he was when he was convicted. convicted. Uh, uh, you said I said Stanford already. It's Cornell. Cornell. Oh. Yes. He did, then did work at, at MIT. Yes. Uh, so, but the, 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 after appeals, he was sentenced for three years probation, 400 hours of community service, and a fine of $10,050 plus the cost of his supervision. Just, I don't know. That, there's no question there. I just thought it was an interesting oh, okay. factoid. Like, uh, okay. Where is he going? What did a supervision cost back then? I have no idea. How much was that? How much was it? He's a gum and a nickel. I don't know. All right. The Michelangelo virus was first discovered on February 4th, 1991 in Australia. It was designed to infect DOS systems and then infect the boot sector. Each year, the virus remained dormant until what day? Crap, it's Michelangelo's birthday, and I don't know it, the date. That is my hint. The hint is it's the birthday of Renaissance Honest Michelangelo. But I don't remember if the date. If that helps you in any capacity. Yes, because the Encyclopedia Britannica in my back pocket <laughs> is going to friggin' help me with that one, you schmuck. Um, April 1st. March 6th. March 6th, yes. I was just in Italy, and I don't remember his birth date, so I just don't even. Bad. You weren't paying really attention bad. on the tour. No, I wasn't, because they took the... In the academia where David is, they yeah. used to have a, a bust of him, but it's out for restoration. So I would have looked at the plaque if it were there. You just would have looked at the bust. I understand. Yeah, right. John exactly. McAfee had... had a, of land. <laughs> <laughs> John McAfee had been quoted by the media saying that 5 million computers would be affected by the Michelangelo virus. And some say that claim was exaggerated. Anyway. I, just, I have there? no. So, I just have ridiculous okay. facts that also just to show everyone how smart I am. That it was I can also nineteen ninety one. Paper. <laughs> Were there even five million computers in nineteen ninety one? I don't know. Maybe nineteen ninety. All right, let's go to nineteen ninety nine, where malware such as Happy ninety nine virus, the Melissa worm, and the CAC worm are released. These spread very quickly through Microsoft environments. The Melissa worm was different from other viruses mentioned because. It infects a system using what mechanism? Oh, crap. Um, Melissa Morris? It's, oh, oh. Melissa. M M Melissa I, I, Worm. I, I, I'm trying to think. Uh, was the Melissa Worm the macrovirus? Yes, macroviruses for 10 points. Woo! Josh Marpet, you go. All right. A computer worm written by a Dutch programmer named Jan de Witt on February 11, 2001, was designed to trick email users into opening a mail message purportedly containing a picture of a famous tennis player. Who was that tennis player? Um, Do you need a hint? Yes. Okay, I, can, I can read more. Uh, so it actually hid the malicious program. The worm arrives with an email with the subject line, here you have, comma, semicolon, zero, close parenthesis. 
That's helpful? <laughs> that that's a hint. You, you don't remember the subject line? Here you have. Uh, the tennis player? It was a female tennis player. It was, uh, she was famous in yes. the late 90s, early 2000s. Yes. And uh, uh, Kornikova. Yes. What's her first name? Uh, it started with an M. No. Wasn't it? No. A- 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 Anika? <laughs> Is that even a word? Was that e- <laughs> What was that? <laughs> It's not Melissa. It's Anna. Anna. Anna, Anna Kornikova yeah. virus. Remember? No. Yes. No, obviously not. What am I thinking? I didn't <laughs> open the attachment. <laughs> there you go. In 2001, a worm spread by exploiting holes in both Sun Solaris and Microsoft IIS. To compromise the Solaris systems, the worm takes advantage of a two-year-old buffer overflow vulnerability in which program and or service on Sun Solaris. This is all you. <laughs> 2001, you said? Yeah. 2001, I wasn't even using anything, son. It, it ends in a D. Ends in a D. It allows you, know. you to do admin stuff. Is HD? It allows you to do admin stuff. Is it the... the At CD? It's in it D? There's... How many of them are there in Unix? Yeah, it's a running process. It's a running process. Is it the SSH daemon? Nope. Um, it is S admin D. Oh. S admin D worm compromised oh, 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 yeah. Sun Solaris systems and then would attack Microsoft IIS systems. This is like this is like what, what You I know what, what's historical is my first incident response at the university I worked for was responding to an incident with the S admin D worm. Which is why oh. it's in your head and nobody else's. Pretty much. Pretty much. And, and you realize of course how old that makes you. Uh, yeah, uh, no, I try not to think about that, Josh. Marpet. Thank you very much for your colorful commentary. Okay. Code red. Was a computer worm observed on the internet on July 15th, 2001. It attacked computers running Microsoft's IS web server. The code red worm was first discovered and researched by EI digital security employees Mark Mayfrey and Ryan Permay. What vulnerability did it exploit? What extension in IIS did it exploit? No, no, no. We don't. No, ISAPI. Like, it is the index server ISAPI index extension. Server. Yes, yeah. ISAPI extension. Okay. Why did they name it Code Red? It was the first iteration of stupid names for malware. Wrong. No. Anyone? We're a fan of Mountain Dew's Code Red beverage. Yeah. It was popular at the time, which is what they were drinking when they discovered the Are worm, you serious? Which is why they called it, yes, take it up with Mark. I didn't name so it. So I was right. It was the first iteration of stupid malware names before Shellshock uh, and Poodle. I, well, I wouldn't call it the first stupid. I mean, Michelangelo is pretty stupid to call hey, at it. At least there's something. Yeah, but there's something they're related to. If this His was birthday. related. They were drinking Code Red when they found the... The inventor of the Michelangelo virus is like, I coded a birthday in there. It's Michelangelo's birthday. These guys are like, we're drinking code red. I am the host. I am the host. I am always right. (laughs) That's not what she said last night. (laughs) Okay. All right. Here's here's one. Ready? The Nimda worm is discovered and spreads through a variety of means, including vulnerabilities in Microsoft Windows and backdoors left by code red and S admin D worm. See, it relates to our previous questions. Where does the name come from? It's admin backwards. Yes, admin spelled backwards. Very good. Um, 2010, industrial computer systems were targets of the Stuxnet worm. This malicious tool targeted programmable logic controllers in order to control machinery on factory assembly lines. It was so damaging that it's thought to have been the cause of the destruction of several hundred of Iran's uranium-enriching centrifuges. Where does its name come from? Stuxnet. That's a good question. I don't know. Do you know? No. I know where it, it came from, but not oh, the, the name. name. The yeah, name, not the... <laughs> we know more it, than it you purportedly do. purportedly came from... <laughs> it purportedly came from various sources. Israel. Innocent. <laughs> <laughs> the United States government. <laughs> Working uh, together. Stuxnet <laughs> was to stop... Um, it, was not, it wasn't unexploded ordinance. Uh, I forget. I apologize. I don't know. Um, so the current name is derived from a combination of keywords in the software. Dot stub and mrxnet.sys appeared in 
the source when they were reverse engineering. See, a non-stupid name for malware. It's non-stupid. It's okay. It <laughs> comes from something valid. Poodle. Yeah, come on. You just keep going on that point. <clears throat> Famous hacker trivia. Famous hackers. Are you ready? Talking about me? Uh, you are not on, on this Damn list. Damn it. I'm sorry. I'm definitely not on that list. <laughs> you are not on this list either now that we've eliminated you two. I am not on this list either, so we can eliminate all people on this panel. Let it be known that Paul on this date and time has shown modesty. Yeah. <laughs> Thank you. Duly noted. <laughs> oh, wait. That's not really modest of me to say. Anyway. He infiltrated... <laughs> he infiltrated... <laughs> he infiltrated 97 U.S. military and NSA computers by installing virus uh, viruses and deleting a few files. All of his efforts to satisfy his curiosity, but alas, curiosity killed the cat. It was soon found that he was guilty of having hacked the military and NSA websites from his girlfriend's aunt's house in London. Who is this famous hacker? Someone's text messaging me. That's what that... Oh, I was wondering. I'm like, wow, that, that sounds like your Tinder alert just went off. And, or it could be that, too. Bumble it's the same. now? I forget. I, I, I don't know dating anymore. All right, so who's the famous hacker? 97 systems. Uh, what, when was this? I'm sorry. Did you say? This was... Uh, I don't know. I don't have a year in front of me. Girlfriend's aunt's house in London. Hacked into NASA military. Mitnick would have liked it to be him? Nope. Um, but no. Uh... First name is Gary. Uh, mm. I don't know. Gary McKinnon. McKinnon. Gary Thank McKinnon. You. Once upon a time, the most wanted cyber criminal of the U.S. now is an affluent entrepreneur. He is now a security consultant, but was convicted of hacking Nokia, Motorola, and the Pentagon. He pleaded guilty. Stop me if you know if you want to shout the answer. Mitnick. Yeah, Kevin Mitnick. Okay. Also known as the Mentor. He was a member of a couple of hacker elite groups in the 1980s, notably the Legion of Doom, who battled for supremacy online against the masters of deception. However, his biggest claim to fame is that he is the author of the Hacker Manifesto, which he wrote after he was arrested in 1986. That just gave me the biggest deer in headlights look like ever. Yeah, I'm, I'm, It's like, what are you guys doing to me? I'm having a problem remembering. I'm sorry. Go ahead. Lloyd Blankship was his name, aka the I've never mentor. Really, like, the mentor. read too much about him. I, I remember I, the name. Apparently, now that you I have it, way no. too much time on my hands. Because anyway, um, although technically a phone freak, the captain is seen by many as the father of modern hackery and freaking. Captain Crunch. Yes. Do you want to hear the rest of my little story I had about Captain Crunch, as well as being somewhat of a legend, born. Can someone mute that, please? Thank you. Uh, the father, uh, I said that, as well as being somewhat of a legend, born in 1944, the legend began when he was informed by a friend that a toy whistle given away in a box of Captain Crunch cereal would emit a 2600 hertz tone when the third hole was glued up. Do you know his real name? Uh, John, I can't remember his last name. Draper. John, John Draper. Draper. Thank you. He directs the nonprofit organization 2600 Enterprises Inc. and publishes a magazine called 2600, The Hacker Quarterly. Right. Do you know his both real name and uh, what did we call this? We called this not a handle. It was a, it's a pseudonym. Talking what? about Emmanuel? Yes. Emmanuel. Emmanuel Goldstein. Okay. And, and I don't remember his real name. Eric Corley. Eric Corley, yeah. Where does Emmanuel Goldstein come from? It's a book. Um, uh, it's a book like... One of the most famous books, especially amongst those nerds. Uh, not Snow Crash. It's uh, a year. 1984. Yes. Yes. Written by? Uh, uh, <laughs> damn it. Orwell. George Orwell. Yes. I'm having brain farts galore, man. It's been a long day. Oh, my God. That was really funny. I just kept going. Um, okay. So the creator of Pretty Good Privacy, the most widely used email encryption software in the world is... The creator of it? Yes. PGP. You told me this one earlier. I've already forgotten. It. Zimmerman. <laughs> Phil Zimmerman, yes. Phil Zimmerman, yeah. Oh, yeah. Start with a Z. Widely known as one of the fathers of the internet, he is the co-designer of the TCP IP protocols and the architect of the internet. He is currently vice president and chief internet evangelist for Google. He contributes to global policy development. Vint Cerf? Yes, Vint Cerf. Very good. Very 
job well done. He was highly influential in the development of theoretical computer science, providing a formalization of concepts of algorithm and computation with a specific machine, which can be considered a model of general purpose computer. Oh, wait, are you now in the next one talking about Turing? This, yeah, this is the next one, and okay. this is, yes, in fact, Alan Turing. Alan Turing, yes. okay. Very good. I'm like, are she still running? Wait, is he still giving us a fact? Or I'm a sorry. Yeah, I'm, okay. I'm like, Number, is there a question uh, here? What the hell? <laughs> Number nine. Ron Rivest, Adi Shamir, and Leonard Edelman. All them, Edelman? Edelman. 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 Not all of them. <laughs> Who first publicly described this algorithm in 19... 19- yes. Very good. He, would you give Matt a chance? Matt knew the oh, answer. Well, I knew that for, answer because I work for him. So. He works there. Oh, that one was easy. Yeah, yeah. It's on the entry exam when you can work there, I guess. Yeah, you know. The first um, initials of their last names. It ain't hard. All right. Number 10. Now, give Matt a chance, okay? Number yeah. 10. This is the big one, Matt. You ready? No. He is credited <laughs> with a number of innovations in firewalls, including building the first internet email server for whitehouse.gov domain and intrusion detection systems. He has held technical and leadership positions with a number of computer security companies and is a faculty member of the Institute for Applied Network Security. He worked for you. He worked for me? On your group, briefly. Really? Jeff? Did you just answer? Did you? Jeff Mann? No. <laughs> Jeff Mann is credited with inventing the firewall. Oh, Marcus Random. <laughs> Marcus Random, yes. Marcus, yes! I got it. Firewall, I finally got it. <laughs> That's right. He did report to me for a little bit. A little while. Yeah, That's a right. little while. A really That's short right. time. All right. So it's determined that we suck at trivia. Yes. I got two more bonus questions. I, I know more things suck. about Marcus Random than firewalls. <laughs> Since you guys <laughs> suck so hard. He, all right. This is bonus question one. He has serious hacking days and drives a Tesla. He has serious hacking days and drives a Tesla. <laughs> it is also rumored that he and I jumped on the bed naked at Black Hat several that years ago. That does not narrow it down. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, you uh, did. You, Dave, you, you Dave, were you were yeah Marcus? earlier. Dave Marcus, no, <laughs> no. Everybody jumps in bed naked with Dave Marcus. I, I mean, well, on. not me. How? <laughs> <laughs> he also appears on the news talking about various. Dave Kennedy. Dave Kennedy, yes. Oh. Wow, <sighs> had to. Re- All right, bonus question number two. A historically significant internet figure, he is renowned for first analyzing the Morris worm, one of the earliest computer worms, and his role in Usenet backbone cable. He was a member of the President's Information Technology Advisory Committee from 2003 to 2005, has been an advisor to the National Science Foundation, and serves as an advisor to over a dozen other government agencies and major corporations. Much? No. It's a good guess, though. I don't know. I have no idea. His nickname is Spaff. Oh. Um, yes, uh, Gene Spafford. Gene Spafford. Very good. I got more. Look, can we just get... Are we, how are we doing on time? You're we have to wrap, killing us. Wrap it up. Why don't we skip the trivia? Let's, yeah. You're just killing us. <laughs> all right. Let's, let's thank you both for hanging in there with me for all of my new trivia questions, which you guys just loved. I can tell by the looks on your faces. You want to kill me right now. Loved it. <laughs> yes. Yeah. And don't worry. This will be on the internet. Thank you. Thank <laughs> you.